Uh, moving on to the p-value approach of uh, doing significance testing. So in our previous video, we did uh, a series of t-tests by uh, calculating the critical value of calculating the t or oblique z value and comparing it with the critical value. If the uh, value of z or t was uh, below the critical value, then it would lie in the acceptance region, else it would lie in the rejection region. So I'm going to look at uh, the uh, uh, the t dist uh, the distribution between the uh, the population mean and the sample means again and i'm going to uh, iterate a different method this is known as the p value method or uh, the probability value so this is known as p value interpretation so how do we do or how do we compare significance tests by looking at the p value now in an example in any particular example uh, the in the significance test that we are doing we are testing the sampling distribution around a hypothesized population mean. So we have a population mean which we are assuming to be mu. And this is typically also the uh, null hypothesis that I have a population over here which is mu. Then I have a sample which I have extracted. And this is the data set which I am working with. In the data set, the sample mean is coming out to be x bar. And the data set, uh, the, uh, the uh, sample will also have its own standard uh, deviation, which is the sample standard deviation. So yeah, I have the sample standard deviation S, I divide it by under root N, I will get the standard error of the sampling distribution. Once I have the standard error, I can calculate the difference between the hypothesized mean, mu, and the sample mean which I am getting, X bar in terms of standard error. So I divide or I take the difference between the sample mean and uh, the uh, the population mean. I divide it by standard errors and this will give me the number of or this will give me the t value. This t value which I compare with the critical value and then I figure out whether it lies in the acceptance region or the rejection region. When I'm doing it at let's say 95% confidence interval, the t critical value is at 1.96 standard errors plus or minus right or the mod of t has to be less than 1.96 if it is lies in, in less than 1.96 in that case it is in the acceptance region else we have to go with the rejection of the null hypothesis now moving on if i go ahead and and draw the normal distribution around the uh, the population mean i know that the total area under this curve is 1. So the total area under the curve or the probability distribution will always be 1. So how much area lies between mu naught and x bar? So I am specifically looking at this area. So looking at the, uh, the area between mu naught and uh, x bar, so that is going to be, so if I will just uh, fill it up, so let's say that area is going to be this area that we are looking at. So what is the area over here? So this is the area between the uh, uh, the population mean that we are testing and this is the sample that we've drawn or the data that we have. The, dif the difference in this is the difference in terms of standard error. So how many standard errors or what is the t value between this uh, these two points on the distribution over here? Now I know in a normal distribution, the mean, the median and the mode are at the center of the distribution and the uh, distribution is also symmetric around the mean. So this part is equal to this part around the mean. Therefore, the total area of the curve greater than mu is 0.5. right? And 0.5 lies on uh, the left side of the distribution as well. So if the total area is 0.5, then uh, let this area over here, if this is the, the shaded area is... Uh, uh, any particular is the area between a mu naught and x bar then what is the area which lies beyond the sample or beyond x bar so this area beyond x bar we are going to call this as the p value so this p value is going to be 0.5 minus the shaded region we'll call this region let's say whatever is the uh, uh, the area under the curve as per the z table so if this is 0.5 minus t so the uh, probability or the PE value which lies beyond x bar is the area over here, the shaded region, which is 0.5 minus t. Now the p value that we see on the table is always given by a mod. By mod means I'm going to remove the sign. By removing the sign means that this uh, deviation from the population mean can occur on both sides. 
So I have to equally go over here. So if I know that t is the value of x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation and I take a mod of this, therefore I'm removing the sign. So it doesn't matter if it is plus t or it is minus t. So I go the same area over here as well. So I will go an equal distance from this point as well on the left hand side and I will call this Let me just draw it out. This point as plus t, sorry minus t. So this is plus t over here, this is minus t over here. And this area, let me fill this up as well. This is the area which lies on uh, the left side of the axis. So what is the area now which lies beyond the sample? This is the area which lies beyond the sample. This is going to be on both sides of the axis or both sides of mu. So eventually the mod of p is going to be 2 times 0.5 minus the area under the curve over t or this is the p value of my distribution or this is the p value of my significance test. Now at what point does the p value become greater than the critical value? So if you remember when I am doing the test at 95% confidence interval that means the total area that is outside in the rejection region is going to be 5%. 5% is the rejection region. If this area which lies beyond the two samples is less than 5%, that means my sample lies outside into the rejection region. If this value which is the area outside the sample is greater than 5% or the p value is greater than 5%, that means it lies in the acceptance region and this is how we are going to actually go ahead and interpret the p value of a, of a sample uh, significance testing. So I'll go back to the presentation once more and I'm going to look at this and uh, this is a very very important and a very uh, precise statement. What do we mean by the p-value once we've done a test? So the p-value is the probability of the sample mean coming up equal or even further away from the hypothesized mean. That means what is the probability if I have a given if I have a given sample mu naught, what is the probability that I will extract a sample which is x bar or greater than x bar on both sides? Right? What is the deviation between the sample mean and the population hypothesized? So the deviation that we are talking about over here, the deviation is x bar minus mu mod. For, for example, let's say I have the hypothesized population mean is 100. So let's start off with the so I'm going to rub this off and create some uh, space over here. Let's say we start off with the h naught that mu is equal to 100 and I get a sample mean which comes out to be 98 and the standard error that I calculate using the sample standard deviation comes out to be let's say maybe 1. right? So what is x bar minus mu uh, x bar minus uh, mu mod? So this comes out to be 98 minus 100 mod, which is equal to 2. So what is the probability that I will extract a sample from the population of if mean 100, where the deviation between the sample mean and the population mean is 2 or greater? So that is the p-value. So p-value this tells us the probability of me of uh, the analyst extracting a sample which is the sample over here from a population such that the difference between the two the population mean and the sample mean is greater than or equal to 2 that is the p-value which comes out in a test and how do we compare it if the p-value is greater than 0.5 sorry points uh, I mean 0 0.05 which is 5 percent if this value is greater than 0 0.05 that means it lies within the 95% confidence interval, i.e. the probability of such an example being extracted is more than 5%. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis being that this sample has come from this population. If this p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we can go ahead and reject the analysis at 95% uh, confidence interval, i.e. the probability that I will extract this sample from this population is less than 5%. Therefore, the null stands voided, and this is what we uh, that this is what we interpret by the p-value. The p-value is also known as the probability of null being true.
If the probability of null being true is greater than 5%, null cannot be rejected at 95% level. When we are doing the test at 95%, if the probability of the null being true is less than 0 0.05, then we go ahead and reject it at 95% level. Now, what will happen if I do the test at, let's say, a 99% level? When I do the test at 99% level, the rejection criteria becomes 1% or 0 0.01. In that case, all the p-value comparison, instead of being with 0 0.05, I'll start doing it with 0 0.01. If p-value is greater than 0 0.01, accept the null. If p-value is less than 0 0.01, then reject the null. Obviously, when I move it to 0 0.01 value, the acceptance region, which is this region, will actually become larger. I will go ahead and let's say the acceptance region instead of this red area at 1.96 standard errors, I will actually go up to 2.57 standard errors on both sides. Therefore, the acceptance region will expand on both sides and it will begin to accept samples which are even further away from the population mean. So obviously there are trade-offs when we set the significance level. Setting the significance level is also known as the alpha value. So alpha value is the, the maximum size of the rejection region that we are going to accept. So at alpha equal to 0 0.05, we will reject any sample which has less than nine, less than 5% probability of coming from the population mean. When I set at alpha equal to 0 0.01, we are setting it at 1% level, which is even more uh, lenient. So at 5% level, we are looking at a 95% confidence interval around the mean. At 0 0.01, we are looking at a 99% confidence interval around the mean. And we all know a 99% confidence interval is always larger than a 95% confidence interval. So moving back to the presentation, right? the p-value is the probability of a sample mean coming up equal to or even further away from the hypothesized mean. The deviation is measured on both sides. So as I've explained over here, we're going to measure the deviation on both sides. So we calculate the value of t, we plot minus t and plus t on the distribution. Then we look at the shaded area, which is beyond the value of t on both sides. The total area of this shaded region is the probability value. This probability value means the probability of a sample mean coming up equal to or even further away from the hypothesized means on either side. The other interpretation is that uh, it is also the probability of null being true. So please remember this phrase. If the p-value is low, null has to go, i.e. if the probability of null being true is very low, it's got to go. And how low is too low? That is the value of alpha. So that is where the confidence interval or the 95% significance level or the 99% significance level comes into picture. Most of the analysis that we do will always be at around 95% level unless specified in uh, or uh, specified by business or specified by a certain requirement. Most of the significance testing is done at 95% level.